The next thing that I wanted to talk about is the whole business with histamine. Um, so histamine, as we talked about in class, um, the histamine producing cells, their cell bodies are in the tuberomammillary nucleus in the brainstem. Those, their axons project all throughout the brain. And there are two projections that we're interested in with hist histamine. The first projection is from the tuberomammillary nucleus into the brain stem. So dendrites in the brain stem. At this projection, you find H1 receptors. The H1 receptors are excitatory receptors. They're G-protein coupled receptors, but they excite the receiving neuron. Um, and in the brainstem, they stimulate cells which help to keep you awake. Um, the second type of histamine receptor is found at a different synaptic connection. This is a uh, fairly different kind of synapse from the ones that we've talked about so far in this class. Um, they're called axon, ax, axonal, ax, ax, axoaxonal synapses, which means that there's an axon that makes a synapse onto another axon or an axon terminal, and then that uh, connects up with this um, uh, receiving cell. So for example, we have an axon from the substantia nigra that's going to be releasing dopamine. It connects up to a dendrite of a cell in a striatum. We've already talked about this. Dopamine activation here increases the desire to move. There's some complexity in D1 and D2. You should review that, but I'm not going to go over it right now. Um, at these synaptic connections, um, some of them you will find an axon from the tuber or mammillary nucleus makes a synaptic connection not onto a dendrite, but onto the presynaptic terminal of this dopamine-releasing neuron. There you find a G-protein-coupled receptor, but it's not an H1 receptor, it's an H3 receptor. Um, H2s aren't in the brain. Names are always confusing. That's just what we have to deal with. When histamine is released here, so when this axon from the tuber mammillary nucleus is active and there's action potentials and calcium comes in and histamine gets released, that histamine binds to the histamine receptors. It turns on an internal signal in the presynaptic terminal that blocks the voltage-activated calcium channels. You should remember that voltage-activated calcium channels are necessary to release neurotransmitter, and so if we block the calcium channel, we are going to get less neurotransmitter released which means less dopamine, which means less desire to move. In fact, these synapses are not at every dopamine-releasing connection in our striatum, but they are sort of scattered throughout our stri the striatum of everybody's brain, and they're part of the way that our brains help to regulate the release of dopamine and prevent unwanted urges to move. So histamine causes a decrease in the desire to move. Now we get to the complicated part of this. Our H1 receptors are very sticky. They, have, they stick very well to histamine. A little bit of histamine is all it takes, and then all of them are covered. Um, a few hundred molecules of histamine in the synapse, and every single receptor has histamine bound to it. Um, for the H3 receptors, you have to dump a whole bunch of histamine on them before enough sticks to turn a lot of them on. Um, the 20,000 molecules that are typically packed in a single vesicle um, is just barely enough to get it so that most of the receptors are bound. So these are less sticky. So if we cut the amount of histamine in half, since, all we, since we've got 20,000 molecules of histamine being released over here at our H1 synapse in the brainstem, and we only needed 500 molecules or something to get every receptor bound, so if we cut down from 20,000 to 10,000, that's not going to make a difference. Every receptor is still going to be bound. What that means is that if we have a little bit, if we have half as much histamine being made, we're not going to get that sleepy. But... Over here, if we make half as much histamine, because our H3 receptors are not very sticky, um, then now all of a sudden um, uh, a lot fewer of them are active, which means there's now less suppression of dopamine, so that means more dopamine is released, and that means more desire to move. It is very important to emphasize that 
most people with Tourette's syndrome do not have a mutation in any histamine-producing genes. Um, you should review the very first sentence in the Piazza post that I made today um, about that. However, um, in a very small number of people, they have a mutation in the gene um, that makes histamine such that one of the two copies, either the copy they got from the mom or the copy they got from the dad, isn't working, and so half as much histamine gets made. And if that happens, they don't get sleepy because half the histamine doesn't affect our H1 receptors. They, they, get, they are so attracted to histamine that half, half the histamine still completely swarms them. But half the histamine means less suppression of dopamine means more dopamine released, means more urges to move, and this causes Tourette's syndrome symptoms. This causes guarantees of Tourette's syndrome. Most people with Tourette's syndrome do not have this. Please review the, um, the post on Piazza and please let me know if that's unclear. But you should understand um, the logic behind all of this, what's going on, the decreased release of histamine, and so on with all of this.